Welcome back. Man, we have a show for you. Do you love music? Well, if you do, you're going to love this guest. My name is Vindy Quino. Our next guest, believe it or not, is Dan Zlotnick. Dan! How are you? Hey, welcome. Thank you. Thanks you for having me. You are an entertainer extraordinaire. <laughs> I try. Talk to me about this wonderful career of yours <laughs> in music. Well, yeah, I guess it started about maybe two or three years ago. Um, I started writing some songs. And then uh, in my regular bar gigs, I would kind of sneak my own songs into the, into the <laughs> set without people noticing. And uh, eventually my mom caught on and she was like, I don't know that song. Who wrote that? <laughs> and I said, that was one of my songs. And she said, you have to record these. You have to get them out there. Um, and that's what I did. I started recording. I, I recorded an EP. And then that was about a year ago. And then more recently, I recorded a full length album. Wow. So you, so you went pretty much from entertainer to songwriter. Yeah, exactly. And you kind of get tired of playing other people's songs and, and you start to put together some of your own ideas and it's a lot now, more fun. Now, you started playing in the cradle, right? Okay. Uh, just Pretty about. <laughs> <laughs> I was 11 years old. Yeah. Uh, my parents decided to get me a guitar for my 11th birthday. And uh, I like to say that I've played something every day ever since. But, um, you know, I, I, I try to keep it going every day. So are you one of those guitar players who sits in his room and just plays and plays and plays and plays? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's actually how I got started playing in front of other people. Yeah. Was in college I was playing for the guys in my dorm and When was the first real gig? The first real gig I believe was it was a January in Tampa. So I actually got to play outside in January. <laughs> oh, wow. Um and I had been playing on the streets and I had made enough money to buy my own sound system wow. and So you did a little Guitar case on the oh, yeah. sidewalk, and yep. you played your I, thing. I went out late at night, and, and my friend said, hey, you're playing in the dorms. You might as well go play for some other people. Yeah. Um, and so then I had I had a four-hour gig at a place called The Bungalow in Tampa, oh. a nice little outdoor patio. And ever since, I've been addicted to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Once you get out there, my first gig was mm -hmm. in sixth grade. <laughs> I won an essay contest, mm -hmm. and I had to stand on the fire truck. Nice. And do my speech to the students. Well, I stood on that truck and I looked out at that audience and I said, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. Yeah. 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 You know? Are you a Leo? Yeah. I am a Scorpio. A Scorpio. Yes. Wow. November. Yeah. yeah, usually usually it's those Leos that need those lights. <laughs> you know? Give me an yeah. audience. <laughs> yeah. So you started playing, mm -hmm. and you did your gigs. You were yeah. still in college. Yep. Uh, did you do any college gigs? I haven't done any college gigs. When I was, I actually transferred from Marist College here in Poughkeepsie oh, wow. to the University of Tampa, and that's when I was living down there. But when I was at Marist, I started doing some fundraisers and coffee houses yeah. on campus, and that's what really got me into the acoustic rock as opposed to the electric guitar that I'd kind of grown up with. Did you ever have uh, a group? Or was it always solo? I had a band in high school. I always give them a shout out, Hot Soup. I think we were the greatest <laughs> high school band ever formed. Um, and I actually found some old concert footage of us What recently. was the name of the group? Hot Soup. Hot Soup. Yeah, it's, it's the That's best, cool. best high school band ever. Uh, but actually, I've, more recently, I've put together a, a band for my own music. Um, oh. and, we, and we've got some shows um, coming up. And what do you have in the band? I have a drummer, a, a drummer. bassist. And most recently, I've added a rhythm guitarist. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's been a lot of fun to... Do you have a name for the group? I don't right now. Oh. But if I'm <laughs> taking suggestions if anybody has any... Hot soup! <laughs> Hot soup. <laughs> there you go. Cold soup! <laughs> uh, all right, so that's cool. So now you, yeah. you play out. Mm -hmm. uh, you write your own songs. Yes. Where does this come from, Dan? Uh, the songs I always try to make out of real life. So wh whether it's an experience that has entire and been entirely true and has happened from the beginning of the song to the end of the song or if it's something that sparks something else in the song so um, one of the songs I'm going to play today it, it came from an experience where I kind of embellished on on the truth a little bit to create more of what I was trying to say hmm so so you write from your heart so yes. yep. now do you 
keep like a journal where you write things down? Mm -hmm. How does that work? I have a couple different journals, I would say. Um, my phone is a huge place for me to oh, get yeah. some ideas down because you don't always have your journal when the inspiration hits. So um, I use the notes page on my phone to write some ideas down. And then I do have some, some pen and paper journals as well as some straight up Word documents on my computer. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh, so you put these songs together. Now, you, you have two albums out, right? Yep. Yeah. Wow. So uh, your first one was? It was self-titled. Um, it's called Dan Zlotnick. <laughs> and it's, it's got six songs that I thought that you know, would kind of work well together, kind of as an introduction to my songwriting. And I had some other songs left over. So um, you know, I kept writing. And by the time we got to um, about a year after my release, I was ready to record my second album, which was Bumpers, which is uh, a full eight song album. <laughs> so, so you did your full album, uh, mm -hmm. and now all of these uh, uh, songs, mm -hmm. that's what you perform? Or you know, you, you, when we were talking before, you said you have three different kinds of performances that you mm -hmm. do. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so I just consider um, I have shows, which is a kind of a concert setting, and, and in a concert setting, I'll play almost all my own stuff maybe I'll sneak one cover in there but usually it's just all my music wow. um, and then I have gigs which I consider to be kind of a regular bar gig which is about yeah. half and half you play depending. the kind of music that the people who go to that place yeah expect. exactly and sometimes you know I've, I've been lucky enough to get some performances in consistent places where I'll get the same people coming back so they can start to request my songs I was just which gonna say nice. you take requests I do take requests um, and then also I do private parties. And so, you know, when I do a, a wedding or just a regular backyard barbecue, um, I'll, I have a list that I can send to the hosts and say, you can pick a playlist. I can, oh. you know, I, sometimes they'll leave it up to me and sometimes it's a mix of both. So, um, yeah, really just the, the gigs, the shows and the parties are my, my main three. About how many days a week do you perform? Uh, at least two, usually wow, sometimes three or four. Uh, it depends on the week. I actually am uh, in the process of putting together a little tour for uh, the end of October into oh, November. Nice. Um, so I'll be going down to Asheville, North Carolina. I've wow. got a couple of places in Kentucky and Don't Ohio. Don't go to Houston. So, no. I, <laughs> things, are, things are awful rough down there. Yeah. I, I imagine you do have to keep an eye on weather and you have to keep an eye on a whole lot of things. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Do you do your own bookings? I do all my own bookings. Wow. Um, it takes a lot of emails and a lot of oh, yeah. uh, days just kind of looking up different venues in different cities and different towns. Um, and then, you know, sometimes phone calls and even some snail mail once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you have favorite entertainers. Yes. Who are some yeah. of the musicians you follow? Um, well, initially, and I always say that they're my favorite band of all time, is Led Zeppelin. Ooh, um, wow. When I first got my guitar, the best way for me to learn was to watch DVDs of Led Zeppelin, their concert footage, and just try to copy what Jimmy Page was doing. Yeah. Um, so I, I watched a lot of Led Zeppelin, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, and then I, as I got older, I started getting more into the songwriting aspect, um, and I became more of a fan of Bruce Springsteen, mm. um, Amos Lee, and the Avett Brothers are another favorite of mine. So I, I really try to take the songwriting and combine that with my, my blues rock guitar playing. Wow. Yeah. Strange question. What comes first, the lyrics or the music? It depends. Or do they come together? A lot of times they come together separately. So <laughs> I'll have okay. some lyric ideas and then I'll have a lot of musical ideas. Um, and then I just kind of see what, what matches. I always want the lyrics to match the feel of the music and the sound of the music because um, I think it makes for a more powerful listening experience. Um, so then I, I, I'll have my lyrics and I'll have my music and I'll see what fits together. And sometimes it works really nicely and other <laughs> times it doesn't. Are you one of those songwriters who wakes up in the middle of the night and goes, I have a song. <laughs> I think that's maybe happened to me once. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, it definitely takes some work on my end and it's, uh, it's rewarding because when it is difficult. When do you do your songwriting? Anytime that I can. Anytime. Yeah, a lot of times I'll be riding the train into New York City and I have an hour to myself. Yeah, and, that's you know, a good a time. Great time to just kind of take out a notebook and 
get some thoughts down. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it's a new day and age because you have your phone, you can kind of do it in the phone. Exactly, and I also record musical ideas as voice memos. And wow. so now I have everything that I need on my phone to right write a there. song. And you know, no more pen and paper needed, although I do like using that yeah. as well. I have one of those phones that if I ever want it replaced, I have to go to the museum to replace <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, it, does, it makes it's calls, takes calls, and takes pictures. Yeah. That's it. That's funny. Uh, yeah, it's a new day and age. So mm -hmm. speaking of the new day and age, electronics. Mm -hmm. Do electronics play a part, or are you pretty much... Well, I, I use uh, what's called a loop pedal, so when I'm playing live, I can record myself so you have an accompaniment. And, then, and then play it back so I can do guitar leads and stuff wow. like that. I don't use it the same way that um, a lot of famous people like Ed Sheeran uses to create beats, and it'll sound like a full band. Yeah, For yeah. me, it just kind of adds an extra layer of guitar so I can do some more fancy stuff with the guitar. Right. Um, but then, you know, it's, it's, I, I really appreciate the raw, just acoustic just playing guitar, playing some songs type style. Sounds cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. So you're, you have two albums out now. Mm -hmm. Is there one in the making? Uh, there's always one in the making. There's, a, <laughs> there's there actually is. two in the making. No, <laughs> I, I have uh, definitely a bank of songs that I am drawing from and looking at immediately. And the first thing you do when you release an album is Obviously, you enjoy it as much as you can, but then you start to look at what's coming next. Um, so I definitely have some songs that are, you know, in the in the process of getting ready for a uh, for a third album. Nice. But we'll see when that happens. Now, do you have a recording studio of your own, or? So I use uh, I have this very cheap recording. I guess it's a studio. It's a personal studio. That it's a. Um, I just use it to make demos, and I use that. It has a drum machine because I don't play the drums, um, and I can record the layers just to create a demo just so I know what the song wants to sound like. And then for these two albums, I've gone to um, the Loft Recording Studios in Bronxville, New York, um, wow. and then Al Hemberger, who's the engineer, has, has done a great job of mixing wow. and putting everything together. So they, they really do sound professionally done. Um, but it all, always starts with a demo that's uh, yeah. done in the basement very uh, <laughs> yeah, very right. shoddily. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, that's like a first draft. You know? Yeah, that's, exactly. Uh, we do the same thing in, in writing and doing my books the same way. You yeah. know, it's, and a lot of it's, you know, experimenting, mm -hmm. uh, making sure you want to say what you want to say. Right. Well, Dan... I love listening to you talk, <laughs> but I love listening to you play. So what do you think? You can do a song for us? Absolutely. I'm going to play uh, the title track from my new album, Bumpers. Beautiful. And uh, I hope you like it. Good. We're going to send All you right. over to right. the other set where you'll do that. And you are about to hear an amazing entertainer. Um, Dan can put a song out, and he can put a song out right. So we're going to hear a little bit of what he has to say. Then we're going to talk to him a little bit about that song. And right now he's just about chomping it a bit, ready to give us the sounds of Dan Zlotnick. Go for it. All right. Driving eastbound on I-4 On my way to see a show Bumper to bumper Moving so damn slow A girl pulls up in a beat up for tears pouring down like rain. I don't know what has her, but I wish I could wish away the pain. Remind her that she's not alone Cause we all hurt the same
traffic clears up and she's gone off through another lane I owe you one I said you don't owe me a thing And all you owe yourself Is to be happy Breathing free Cause nothing bad here Lasts forever there ain't no other way to be She said You enjoy the show Thanks for the smile Thanks for talking to me Oh Driving westbound on I-4 On my way home from a show Bumper to bumper Moving so damn slow Nice! Thank you. Very nice. Now, the, uh, this is your cover song? This is my song. This is, yeah, this wow. is the, the title track. Yeah. It's a title track, and it's from your first album. This is from my new album. New the album? The new album is Bumpers, yep. So, so far, I'm three for three. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's so, all right. Yeah, so this is, uh, is this where you're going? This pretty much? Yeah, I mean, this this song is the title track, and this was a very tough decision for me to make yeah you know, what's going to be the title wouldn't of the be a album. tough decision for me that's a <laughs> real good song <laughs> thank you thank you um but yeah I, I just figured that that most of the songs on the album if not all of them um deal with how we kind of interact with people on a regular basis um a lot of the songs deal with relationships with friendships um with how you deal with strangers and and being around people that um you know, and also dealing with yourself. So uh, everything kind of comes back to the bumpers and, and how we interact with each other. I hear you. And then why bumpers? Uh, well, this it originated from the song, and and I was the the story is true for the most part. Um, I was driving in traffic and saw this girl hysterically crying, and um, you know it it was fitting that we were in traffic, and you kind yeah. of you see people for a second or maybe longer. Um, and then they're kind of gone from your life. And so uh, the song Bumpers became what would happen if you got to see this person again that, that you yeah. wanted to kind of make feel better. Yeah, it's amazing. Now, you know. do you feel yourself transitioning from your very first song to now? Absolutely. Yeah, there are songs that, 
you know, I, I, there are songs that were the first song that I ever wrote that I don't think anybody is ever going to hear. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely am trying to progress as much as I can in, in storytelling and in keeping the songs engaging and interesting because you can look at any song and say that's already been done before. So you, you want to always find something new and fresh yeah. for people. Now, you, uh, you said that you're trying to work with groups now. Mm -hmm. uh, are you writing for the group? When you write for the group, is it different than writing solo? It's definitely different. Um, there are some things that make a lot more sense as a solo artist right. um, than do with a band. And so, you know, when you're writing songs and arranging them, I used to only write songs that I could play, you know, sitting in a living room yeah, somewhere. Yeah, sure. Um, but now I'm a little bit more conscious of, of what I can do with a band. And, you know, the guys are awesome. Um, and and they're also on the album. But there's, there's a way of kind of writing with that in mind that, you know, you're yeah. going to have some people around you to around support. You have to kind of think support. about all the other instruments now exactly. that you didn't you, have you, to before. You become more of a composer and less of just kind of a, a singer-songwriter. Wow. Yeah. All right. Uh... So, you've made a choice for a second song. I have. I'm going to play This is the first song that uh, was on the radio for me. I've, I've been lucky enough to have a few songs on the radio. We're going to do something a little different this time. Instead mm -hmm. of talking to you after the song, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to you before the song. Okay. About the song. Sure. And why you're choosing that one now. Mm -hmm. Because we might run right into our credits. Okay. So, uh... So talk to me about this song. Why this song, and what does this song say to us? So this song is uh, its the last song on my first album, or the, the EP, um, and it's called Wildest Dream. And I wrote this song, I was, uh, I was living up in Toronto, and I had a, just kind of a, a day where I needed to thank some people. And so oh, wow. uh, this, is, this is a song about my friends, my family, my girlfriend, um, and everyone that's supported me the people that come see me live that will come back to see me live <laughs> um and it's kind of like you know this is uh this is kind of my journey and it, it wouldn't be the same type of journey if all these people weren't there supporting me now in case we run into the credits mm -hmm. a little too soon i just want to make sure that we cover your website sure so that we know where you are mm -hmm. When you're there, we know when we can catch you, and there it is, Dan Zlotnick. Uh, and it's important because we want to make sure that enough people get to hear the wonderful things that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, there's a creative side. Uh, it appears that if we want to see Dan Zlotnick, the only way we're going to be able to do that is to see Dan Zlotnick. Because <laughs> you are an original. Thank you. Your songs are original and certainly worth hearing. With that in mind, the last song of the first album, yeah. go for it. All right, this is Wildest Dream. Sing along with me. You know the words that 
you haven't heard, but we're in perfect harmony in my wildest dream. In my wildest dream. You're right where you need to be. You're on my side, along for the ride. Without you, it just would not be my, my wildest dream. Oh, oh, oh my wildest dream. My, my, my wildest dream, my wildest dream. Thank you. Well, I, Dan, I think your wildest dreams are coming true. Thank you. Uh, Thanks a lot. So this is what you want to do, and this is what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, we get to hear you. We get to hear what the group is like. And we still have a couple minutes. Oh, yeah? So I'm going to ask you to carry us through the credits. Sure. Uh, your choice. All right. <laughs> I want to thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I want to so thank you for, for sharing me. your incredible talent with us. Uh, we are looking forward to album number three. <laughs> uh, Eventually, yes. We also want to make sure that we get to hear Dan Zlotnick, which is your first, and Bumpers, which is your second. We yeah. have a name for the third one yet? Uh, not yet. Not but yet. I got some well, songs, we're looking no forward to yet. it. In the meantime, take us to the end. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for sharing the talents of Dan Slotnick. Dan, take it away, All my right. friend. We got a ballad of dreamers. This is the the first song on Bumpers. The skies fill the stars, the ocean with salt. Night full of dreamers, and I'm filled with fault. Thought you should know you fill up my thoughts. See, I like you, I miss you, that's all. One, two, three, four. There's a girl for love who lives by the sea. She fills up pages with words about me. She's honest and brave and also afraid. Intrigued by the world, but she cries for the hate.